We've all heard of the O5 Council, the mysterious group of individuals that oversees the foundation. But what exactly is the O5 Council? How was it founded? And who are its members? In this video, we answer these questions. Let's begin by exploring the name O5 Council. But in order to explain it, we will need to remind ourselves of the SCP Foundation's clearance levels. First off, we have level 0. This is the lowest security type and it is given to expendable personnel who have no access to sensitive information. Next up, we have level 1, which is a confidential clearance given to non-essential personnel. Moving on, we have level 2, which is given to most of the foundation's research and security personnel. Furthermore, we have level 3, a security clearance held by administrators and experienced researchers. Also, we have level 4, a top secret security level given to essential foundation workers. And finally, we have level 5. This is the highest security clearance and it is typically only granted to O5 Council members. So as we see, the 5 in the O5 Council's name stands for their security clearance, namely level 5. As for the O, it is short for Overseer or Overwatch. This means that the O5 Council consists of the highest ranking individuals within the Foundation. As such, each O5 member knows almost everything there is to know about the Foundation. And between them all, they know every single secret that the Foundation holds. This makes them the ruling body of the Foundation, and they oversee all operations and direct the Foundation's long long-term plans. As such, they are widely regarded as being among the most powerful people on the planet. And, of course, due to the importance of their work, their identities are highly classified. Naturally, given their mysterious nature, many myths and legends about them circulate within the Foundation. Some people claim that the Overseers are powerful reality benders, others believe that they aren't human, and some people don't even believe in their existence. The O5 Council rarely intervenes in the day-to-day -day process of the Foundation or in the containment of SCP objects because they have much more important things to take care of. They do, however, keep an eye out on certain Keter class objects and they usually micromanage Tomules. And, of course, when a very dangerous experiment is requested, the O5 Council approves or denies it after they vote. As such, most Foundation personnel spent their entire careers without ever seeing the O5 in person. In fact, Foundation members below clearance level 2 do not even know they exist. Furthermore, they have their own mobile task force, MTF Alpha 1, called the Red Right Hand. Also, each O5 also has their own personal staff and security, which are very powerful people within the Foundation. And, of course, no Knowing how powerful they are, it is believed that using anomalous technology, the O5 members have made themselves immortal. Also, due to their importance, the Overseers are not to come into contact with any anomalous entities. Furthermore, many of the most famous Foundation Doctors have been under the eye of the O5 Council, and depending on the behavior of these personnel, they either remain on duty or disappear without a trace. As for the members themselves, it is believed that the Council consists of 13 members. Alright, at this point, we've gained a pretty good understanding of the O5 Council. But who are these people, and how was the Council founded? Well, given that they hold the highest security clearance, this would imply that they established the SCP Foundation and positioned themselves in charge. For example, in the Gate Guardian's file, it is stated that the first member, O5-1, founded the SCP Foundation after being told to prepare by the Gate Guardian. And in the factory proposal, it is stated that the 13 individuals who 
were in charge of securing the factory later became the all five council members. However, being written in SCP-001 entries, these are just theories, so the truth remains unknown. But still, in a document called O5 Command Dossier, we do find some information about the O5 members. However, we notice right away that each member has more than one description. But why? Well, one possible reason is that only one of the descriptions is true, and the rest are decoys. Also, it is possible that multiple people could be behind each of the O5's 13 designations. And finally, some people believe that the multiple descriptions owe to the fact that in different realities and timelines, a different individual occupies the same O5 slot. But in the end, we can't really say for certain. However, this won't stop us from discussing some of the rumors. Starting with the first one, O5-1 is often called the founder. This individual is often reported to be the most powerful council member. As such, it is believed that the remaining members often turn to the founder for advice. However, this implies that the all five members have unequal power, which of course hasn't been confirmed. The second one, O5-2, often called the gardener, is a female of European descent, which appears to be a second version of a foundation director from a different timeline. O5-2 is a strong believer of pragmatic research and believes that SCPs need to be understood. O5-3, often called the kid, is very mysterious because this individual is sometimes a male, sometimes a female, and sometimes non-binary. This overseer has never explained this, and reports indicate that this person is actually deceased and only exists in the form of computer data. The next one, O5-4, is often called the ambassador because he is responsible for conducting private meetings with heads of state and high-tier organizations. O5-4 also has a sizable staff of diplomats working under him. Moving on, O5-5, nicknamed the entrepreneur, creates funding for the foundation by manipulating the world economy, and he uses every trick in the book to achieve this, including anomalous means. O5-6, often called Cowboy, is widely believed to be the uncle of the renowned Dr. Bright. O5-6 is a former Foundation field agent. He is very competent and he is also believed to be the brother of another O5 member. Moving on, we have O5-7, nicknamed Green. This member is believed to be a woman by the name of Miriam Prater, who has been on active duty for more than 77 years. Originally a university professor, O5-7 has implemented a number of training programs in various areas across the foundation. Also, she appears to like Dr. Clef because she has approved a lot of his silly suggestions. Next up, O5-8, also called The Lesser, is a former site director who was promoted to O5. One of his first actions as overseer was to approve a very dangerous termination attempt, which led to the breach of SCP-682. And, of course, this was unacceptable behavior from from an O5, which is why he was probably assassinated. Moving on, O5-9, nicknamed the Outsider, is one of the most unusual O5s because she was inducted directly from the public sector. However, the reason for this was that she was a brilliant scientist that was developing a general theory that explains certain anomalous phenomena. Furthermore, we have O5-10, nicknamed the Archivist. This woman is responsible for keeping records of previous iterations of our planet and associated timelines. These records show how many times Earth has been severely damaged and reset. O5-11, also called the Mailman, is believed to be the only council member who hasn't artificially prolonged his life. This played a role in SCP-2718, an SCP which affects the afterlife. As such, the fate of O5-11 remains unknown. Next up, O5-12, often called Adam, is widely believed to be Adam Bright, the father of the famous Dr. Bright. 
and, as we said, O5-6 is the brother of another O5 member, and this is none other than O5-12. And finally, we have O5-13, nicknamed the tiebreaker. A number of reports indicate that the foundation did not start with 13 O5 members, instead they began with 12, and the 13th one was added after he gained tremendous power. Also, in practical terms, a tiebreaker vote was often required, which was solved by having a 13th member. So as we see, apart from denying dangerous termination attempts, the O5 Council does a lot more. And surprisingly, many of the O5 members have very bizarre origins. But despite of this, the O5 members are doing their job and are keeping us safe, at least for now. If you enjoyed this video, then go watch our What If Everyone Saw SCP-096 video. And make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos.